welcome to another Key Points Intelligence Video Insights. My name is Randy Dazzo, and I'm the Chief Product and Strategy Officer here at Key Point Intelligence. And with me, I have a very special guest. His name is Olaf Lorenz, who is the General Manager DX Branding Division at Konica and Older Business Solutions Europe. Uh, hi, good evening, Olaf. It's, it's really great to see you, although it's virtual, uh, that's okay. Um, and pleasure to talk to you about what's happening in our industry, as well as, of course, Konica Minolta. Um, you know, it, it's been a while since we've um, actually had a chance to, to talk uh, or see each other, of course, pre-pandemic. Can, can you let us know what's been happening with Konica Minolta in Europe and how your role is, uh, uh, your role is integrated in, in this new strategy that I'm hearing about? Yeah, hi, Randy. So first of all, thanks for, for having me. And in fact, yes, it's a while. So, but um, this is valid for a lot of um, also industry fellows. Yeah. So we, we might have not seen in, in physical for, for quite some time. Well, um, the, the, the pandemic, of course, made a lot of different uh, things, um, of course, with uh, businesses, the business we are, we are doing with our clients' businesses. Um, and that's why one of the, the biggest um, challenges also as organizations we had was, of course, to, to adapt to this uh, rapid changing environment and maybe to answering, first of all, to the role. I'm in a kind of orchestrating uh, role to, to look upon all the different uh, business development and business transformational activities. But we, we have a, a strong team of different individuals which is driving for the sales, um, sales go to market activities and so forth. So within that, um, we are breaking silos at the moment, even as a big uh, corporation, we are working much more interconnected on the globe. Yeah, so that's why it's, there's even a lot less um, uh, barriers between local, regional and global. So that's why um, I think that is the biggest change that has happened also to Monica Minolta, that we become a more stronger global united team. Yeah? So, but um, this, this being said, maybe starting also with, a, with an explanation, I have been also saying once in a while, if people are saying, okay, Konica Minolta, you're always talking about being a managed IT company or you want to be a managed IT company and, and acting as a system integrator, how, how would you do that? Um, the, the, I think the biggest um, evidence for this was ourselves, because um, back in March 2020, when we decided as a European organization, not just as a headquarter, but as all the European organization to secure the workplaces of um, each and everyone and, and take care for the health of, um, of our colleagues. Um, we have been practically overnight sending 9,000 employees in a remote work uh, location. Yeah. And um, in order to, to, to do this without any disruptions, um, a lot of things had to basically also happen overnight. So bandwidth um, was, was uh, upgraded overnight. VPN, uh, darling, um, or amount of Dalin clients, have been uh, upgraded to the amount of, of employees. Um, so, and, and I would, or I can proudly say that without any disruption, any major disruption, so from, from one day to another one, we could be basically working on Microsoft Teams as we have been in the office, we could access to our documents, we shared um, different working practices and so forth. So that's why from, from that viewpoint, the pandemic was even a proving point for us that we have been already digitizing our, our business ourselves. And again, to the point, um, that's why I think it's a strong argument also that we believe that we can do the same also for our clients. Sure, sure, sure. So yeah, absolutely. Not only did you have to uh, you know, transform your business uh, for COVID, uh, uh, you've experienced it, uh, you were successful, and, and now you're also helping your clients out uh, um, with that. Of course, uh, you know, COVID, had a, a major impact to not only our industry, but of course, you know, every single industry out there. And a lot of industries are, are really transforming on the way that, you know, they're operating today, uh, specifically because of COVID. Um, and, and they're going through their own transformation. Um, how, how has that affected the European market? How has COVID affected the European market? And do you see companies, um, you know, were they able to transform quickly? And, and how are you helping them, uh, you know, in addressing that? Yeah, well, I think around the globe, the um, most important uh, point for clients, and, and again, talking about clients, of course, we need to divide the, the size of different clients and the, the size of different businesses, because each of those businesses had different demands. 
but thinking about the micro customer, of course, overnight, a lot of, uh, they had very basic requirements, tablets, uh, notebooks, how to manage them, and, and, and maybe later on the security, how to, to make sure that uh, everything is working in a secure environment. But all of this kind of went in, in waves. So that's why what we have been doing initially, of course, trying to help those um, small businesses in, in the first place to make them uh, operational in, in also in a, in a short, uh, short time frame. And that's why, of course, overnight from a very print centric uh, business model, we, we even changed very much into a, a managed IT, um, managed uh, content. So even uh, a lot of the, the scanning, the, the uh, cloud scanning workflows have been, have been established. So I think that was the big change in the beginning so that people were just thinking, okay, how can I quickly recover also my people to, to let, them, uh, let them work and, and let them um, interchange. And over the period of the pandemic, of course, we saw um, a lot of upturns again. And um, everything I'm, I'm explaining right now is of course just valid for the office business, but thinking about another big uh, important step in our, in our overall um, activities is the professional print industry. And the professional in print industry of course have been also initially suffering. However, certain segments also saw an upturn. Yeah? So yeah. Um, we, we, we talk about uh, label business also a lot within our industrial printing um, challenge um, or, or challenging part. So you see that um, even the, the, the linear meters that have been produced on those uh, devices, they, ha they have been just going up because a lot of people were in demand to, to print labels for whatever reason, don't touch, <laughs> um, stay here, make a line and so forth. So, so that's why um, different things have been just accelerating or the, the, the pandemic, the COVID pandemic has been accelerating a lot of these um, activities also within our portfolio and giving us also a bit stronger focus on things that we should foster even more or um, possibly even um, enlarge in, in terms of footprint, in terms of uh, uh, delivery to, to clients uh, for, for this, yeah. Now, you, you mentioned that uh, you, you're transforming to more of an IT services organization. However, I know that Konica Minolta has been, you know, investing in this area for, for, for a long time. I mean, it's not just uh, since last year, since the pandemic has happened uh, more, more than 10 years ago with acquisitions and things like that. And, uh, um, of course, you, you know, you mentioned that you're trying to convince, you know, people that, you know, now, you know, Konica Minolta is not just a printer or copier company, but also an IT services organization. Um, your, your role is, is branding also for this. So can, can you tell me more about what you're doing to help position Konica Minolta more as a services, IT services company than, you know, just a, a copier printer company? Yeah, perfect question. Um, uh, because one of the things um, where we, we, we are, of course, we are not hiding our legacy. And, and, and sure. I have to admit that print is, of course, still the core of uh, most of the activities. Of course. Um, but, but because of that, and, and um, I should also start with this because it might come uh, later on also for, for, for some of uh, our conversation. We have been establishing a, a global initiative or a global value proposition called the Intelligent Connected Workplace. Mm, okay. And, um, and if, if you divide these three points, so we, we're looking for an intelligent connected workplace. And talking about the workplace, um, as we all learned, the, the workplace is no physical place anymore. So we, we, we really um, see and, and, and I'm experiencing ourselves uh, a lot of hybrid hybrid work, so that's why the, the hybrid work will definitely dominating uh, ourselves a lot. So this being said, back to the core business, um, of course we have been in touch with lots of clients already for paper-based workflows for some times, and as the, the over the years the devices became very intelligent for scanning and and routing activities. That's why everything that has been inside a, a, a work place in terms of uh, processes uh, we have been doing already we have been digitizing already for quite some while so the next stage we we have to look in is now how we make the data the unstructured data that we are capturing how to make this unstructured unstructured data um, available to clients so to their benefit 
to make um, make it more meaningful. So to extract meaningful information out of all these uh, different information. So that's why if you then think from that viewpoint, um, as we can manage all of this also with our capabilities, it's it's more than logic that uh, uh, possibly print scan related uh, supplier uh, drives into the uh, managed workplace um, initiatives uh, more. And that's why this intelligent connected workplace uh, principle, which we have been doing, is guiding us also through certain assessment of clients. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we look into their own maturity. And if they still have paper-based workflows, of course, the first stage might be that we just um, uh, connect those, uh, those paper-based uh, places to, to become more digitized. Um, if clients have passing the stage already, then we go to the next stage that we connect their work. Yeah, So just connecting um, locations, uh, different businesses, so that people can seamlessly access uh, um, information within their corporation. But the last stage then is th that's where the intelligent connected workplace um, final goal is that we make it meaningful so that we give uh, customers insight to their information, provide them with um, informed decision making for, for, for doing their business. And um, of course, more and more even automizing their processes by um, artificial intelligence and mm. uh, all the all the. Uh, remote um, or the, the bots for, for RPA processes and so forth. So this is already in, in some of our clients offering uh, an ongoing activity. But this being said, coming from a digital, uh, coming from an analog place where, where paper is still uh, a big point, going to a, an informed decision-making environment, there are stages to be done even for our clients. And uh, we, are, we are, again, we are dividing different maturities at client sites to to um, to do the right thing for them at the right place. Yeah, you know, how, how you described it really is very much of a journey with with clients. And uh, of course, they do know you, uh, you know, they do know Konica Minolta as uh, um, one printer copy organization, still still the core part of your business. But um, then again, you can also help them with their, uh, you know, conversion of paper-based documents to digital, then going from that uh, to um, having all of that data and harnessing the power and information of that data to be able to use that in analytics uh, in, in big data to be able to provide them with, uh, um, you know, more meaningful uh, information that that can uh, be extracted from that data and help them with some type of predictive analytics or prescriptive analytics uh, um, that you might you might uh, be able to help them with. Are, are customers making that connection, um, you know, easily or uh, or how are you, you know, one educating them? Is that something that you know the sales team is is doing that and marketing helping to you know also position uh, that uh, with your customers? Um, no, well, um, of course, customers not easily connecting this. So, of course, the, <laughs> sure, the, sure. the, 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 the brand um, of ourselves, again, has been rooted in, in, in the legacy, um, possibly print scan uh, areas. And again, customers who have been making experience with us for everything else we are doing already in terms of digital workflows, that, that, that these are the easiest one to be converted even to further, yeah. further, further things. But that's why what we are trying to do right now is, is again, to get the message out of about the intelligent connected workplace. And instead of just saying generically, we, we like to do uh, managed IT, um, we, we want to be more specific on the digital workplace, yeah? because um, to my point, um, there is a reasons to believe for clients much better because we are coming from that, that place already, from the workplace we are coming already. And digital workplace solution is something that we can convey in a, in a more, more easy way. So that's why we started, of course, with our sales force to um, make them aware, to, to um, also be able to articulate um, everything I was trying to articulate in terms of, okay, that's the value we can, we can give to clients so that um, it's not just a kind of advertising or, or social media related uh, activity. It is more in rooted. And before I forget that one, we also, we, we, uh, on the branding part, we have been establishing uh, approximately two years ago, um, a kind of um, slogan, which is more a kind of brand ethos, which we have been also inducting. It's called Rethink. And mm -hmm. this is something that we would like to do jointly with clients. So we, we always um, start with a white page. We, we, we help clients to rethink their organizations. 
So it's, it's, it's much more than just a brand asset. It's, it's even, uh, as I said, an ethos. We, we are trying to, to rediscover things that have been possibly taken uh, a long time uh, for clients. So we help to, to make this um, new viewing angles into, into those situations. So in this being said, this combination of um, the way how we deliver things and the, the, the what we deliver at the moment, this has a, has a very good uh, melting point where we get um, a lot of new, even new clients that have never been experienced Kony Kaminota in this way and um, they get a new viewing angle into our, into our delivery. And, Very good. Before I, and, and maybe also to describe a little bit the European complexity, we have been, um, of course, in, in major markets, we have been doing major IT acquisitions. So from that viewpoint, the IT, the general IT experience and, and the, the, uh, the image that we have been um, uh, taken is, of course, in those countries already on a different stage than we have uh, countries where this um, acquisition has not been, been taken place. But that's why we are also trying to find ways to um, scale um, uh, all the expertise also in those markets where this um, uh, acquisition itself has not been made and organically train the, the, the organization to deliver. Very good, very good. Um, you, you had mentioned before too that uh, you know from COVID, many companies had to speed up their digital transformation journey. Um, and uh, of course, you know, you're, you're able to help them connect to each other, especially in this, this new virtual world that we're living in, um, as well as be able to help them connect to their data. Is part of your strategy also to help them connect to other people and help, you know, them to connect, uh, um, you know, their data to other people and things like that, as well as part of the, this, this whole digital transformation? Uh, uh, that's yeah, going well. Well, well, another good question. Um, and specifically on the European side, there is a so-called GDPR or privacy uh, regulation, which is making those activities a bit more complicated. And that's why um, we have certain customers who are interested to, to be benchmarked also with, with their data compared to, to similar businesses, similar clients, um, and to, to just see themselves in the context of um, performance related informations, but also if, if you think about um, procurement related information. So some clients are doing this, but um, in a very complicated um, environment at the moment where, where the privacy is a big, uh, big point, it's not so easy to execute um, all of that. But in general, of course, that's one of the, the, one of the um, strategies on the way forward. Of course, we would like to not just connect with incorporation, um, our clients, but we would like to possibly help also different businesses to be connected so that, that people can learn from best practices, can benchmark, as I said, themselves um, against them. So this is also something that we would like to do, but not um, a kind of overnight uh, activities, because uh, we would like to do this again jointly with clients um, in their best interest. Yeah? So, sure. But uh, yeah. of course, long term and back to the intelligent connected workplace story, that is then giving the, the, the connected workplace another level of intelligence, yeah. Okay, let's switch a little bit, uh, of course, uh, from, you know, there, there's two sides to the diversification uh, that you're going through. One is, uh, you know, pivoting to uh, digital transformation and, and, and even smart workplace. I know that that was also, you know, still part of, uh, you know, kind of the strategy. Um, how, how about uh, the print business? Uh, tell me a little bit of, uh, how um, you know some of the new print initiatives are going at, at KM? Yeah, well, I, I also I divide then the office printing part. So um, just the year before last, we launched a complete new series. Um, we, we call it internally our I series. Um, yeah. That of course brought, brought another level of cloud connectivity and and um, a lot of our platform uh, technology has have been improving next to the user experience, which which was also um, a good uh, good major leap in in uh, in our. Um, over our overall user experience, the um, that series is is has been running very well, and uh, again ever since the when the when the downturn in terms of demand because just the the businesses were not alive um, when when this was there, um, ever since we have been bouncing back. So the Q1 for Konica Minot in Europe was a very good one, 
Um, uh, and, and again, historically, the Q2 is a kind of vacation period for, for the European, European countries, so that's why it's not a good benchmark, but we are looking now also ahead into the Q3, that this recovery is, is gradually um, further increasing. So that's why the, the print side, we have completed lineup, um, it's all unified now, so from an A4 to an A3 perspective, um, all of this is now working seamlessly in terms of the user experience and um, everything that uh, we are doing also in, in terms of uh, compatibility for, for different uh, functions features. On the PP side, we have been also throughout the, the year, we, we, we started uh, with a major launch also just right before the first lockdown was coming. Um, it was our, um, our press uh, C14000, which is our flagship. And we have been entering a complete new segment of customers, so we, we entered um, the, the high professional print um, environment and 80% uh, of our placement really going into net new clients here. So that's why from, from that viewpoint, we have been successfully accessing now a market which we have been also uh, looking already for quite some time. Um, and also here, even within the, the pandemic, we were quite um, stably still be able to sell, install, um, all those different um, devices and now we, we have been creating a very good and very strong uh, market share that then our lower end and um, the, the, the 40, 40, 80, 40, 70 series has been also um, recently renewed and the last one was um, uh, so called um, our 7100 which has just been uh, which, which has just been introduced. So that's why also on the PP side, we just finished a complete uh, renew of uh, of an entire lineup. Um, so for and that that relates to the to the more toner based uh, system. K1 is still a big up up time for us uh, on the European side. We are also making more and more installs uh, here, and. Um, the, the, the last one, uh, which have been also recently added to, to, our, to our line, um, that was coming as a supplement to the label printing, mm -hmm. um, a, a so-called packaging device. It's a shed feed uh, corrugated um, uh, printer, which is going very much, uh, as I said, hand in hand with a label press. So if you think about a small winery, which is doing their labels themselves, they can also um, customize the, the, the packaging uh, in a very simple manner. So these um, elements we have been now um, doing doing recently next to a lot of the software um, uh, items because also here data is becoming more and more important in the professional print area and, and how um, how print rooms are being organized um, and and also here we created a dashboard so called dashboard for the print room to to look beyond the 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 true MIS capabilities but but really looking into performance related data of of um, their print equipment and also to see and measure how more performance and, and efficiency can be taken in, in those environments so so that's why um if I like to say so that core business is is we are doing also extremely well and um, we are as as I'm speaking we are still trying to improve furthermore. Sure, sure, sure. Did did you see um, certain segments actually increase during COVID, or certain areas such as uh, you know maybe labels uh, for sign in signage and things like that? Uh, because uh, well, 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 label signage. These two components, of course, have been heavily increasing, and, yeah. and again, it was so. It was seen uh, to be a peak, and um, that peak didn't didn't peak down again. So it, it's uh, it's Continue. still. And, and it, 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 continues to grow. Yeah. Um, um, signage, of course, was also naturally um, a point, but um, thinking about, uh, again, niche applications in different areas, we, we could be seeing um, a lot of the, the print volume. If you go to traditional, like just business card printing or whatever, flyers, um, uh, leaflets, uh, print, uh, print um, applications, of course, they have been uh, down. But again, also this we can see right now it's been it's been recovering. But as I said, by the by the learning of those different print applications, we also try to find also our way to enhance um, in those those areas. And again, label is of course one of the segments where Konica Minolta also would like to uh, play even a stronger role in the near future. Very good.
You know, what, one area that we didn't really talk too much about, and it really hasn't been, um, a, you know, a topic of conversation since COVID has come out, but, um, you know, in Europe, typically sustainability is really uh, important and, you um, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Even the new generations are really getting into and, and wanting to have a much more sustainable environment. Um, ha have you been doing things around that uh, also? Um, uh, you know, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So the, um, as you said, it's, it's, it's not just, I don't want to say it's just not a European, European thing, but also, um, of course, fostered um, from um, a lot of even natural disasters, which we, we, oh, yeah. we can see yeah. around, the, around the globe. Um, and not just younger generation, I have to admit, um, <laughs> even, even in my household, I, my, my wife is a very strong uh, promoter and I get educated every day to, <laughs> to behave as a good corporate citizen. Um, the, yeah. the, 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 point, the point we are we're doing already since quite significant time is of course to, to help also uh, reducing CO2 emissions. Yeah. But this is not just from a factory viewpoint um, and, and from, from the way we, we do um, or we, we, we help clients to, to reduce um, whatever printing or the, the CO2, CO2 footprint because of printing, but we're looking in all the different corners of our organization to reduce the, the CO2 footprint as a corporation. So that's, that's one of the big initiatives um, which Kony Kaminata since long have been already working. And um, I'm also proudly saying that um, we have been putting the European headquarter in a carbon neutral situation for now meanwhile, almost six years. And if, if I'm not mistaken, we were one of the first partners who have been also offering an, a carbon neutrality program to, to print clients. So that's something that we have been doing already quite uh, quite long time. Um, but of course, another aspect which is also becoming more and more uh, important is the circular economy. Yeah? So closing loop um, activities and also here, Kone Kamenauda is doing strong efforts at the moment. So we have introduced a, a pan-European toner cartridge recycling program. Mm. And part of those cartridges will even be just uh, refilled. So we, we, don't, we just don't recycle them. We are just cleaning the bottles and refilling them. So in, in my opinion, the highest amount of uh, close the loop uh, consideration. But another trend, which is also asked by clients um, very much um, uh, also through the pandemic and, and also um, looking at uh, the SDGs, so which is also forcing more cooperation, is also how much of refurbished equipment we can uh, deliver to clients. So also refurbishment is becoming more and more a point uh, for us. Sure, sure. But, but, but sustainability in our, in our definition is truly following the, the, the famous three letters ESG. So it it's also includes the, the social and the um, governance uh, components. So that's why at the moment we are looking very much in ESG related um, activities rather than just sustainability to yeah. also foster digital responsibility and, and um, of course um, gender equality and from a from a from a governance viewpoint, of course, corporate e ethics. So these these uh, components are at the moment also a very important point, specifically when talking to larger clients, because that's already on their pick list also as a must-have item. And yeah. as we are approaching also larger clients a lot, um, that's that's something that we are that we are doing also um, with with more efforts um, uh, throughout a certain set of European regulations. But we always would like to go beyond those regulations and offer more than uh, just just what we are forced to be done. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. You're you're absolutely right. Uh, <clears throat> it's actually interesting. We've actually also been asked by uh, one of our partners. Uh, you know, and, and I, I I think that you know a lot of companies are asking their partners to be much more socially responsible and um, have the same types of ethics. Uh, um, you know, within their organizations. Uh, you know, equal opportunities and things like that. Uh, so yeah, a lot, a lot of change going on uh, in that environment as well. So um, it's, uh, it's good. I mean, it, it, uh, uh, it helps make a much more richer workforce. Yeah, well, well, even as a future employer, so and if you think about the generation to come, um, these uh, items will also become more and more important yeah. to them. Yeah, it's not just being a great technology brand or but, but how much um, is that company co contributing to society yeah? and to the well-being of uh, each and everyone? 
So okay. that's why um, we, we, of course, would like to position ourselves also in that in that area to be seen as such kind of uh, uh, company who, who delivers to the to the societies and making uh, making impact, yeah, making yeah. a long term impact. Well, Olaf, we, we spoke a lot about a lot of things today between, uh, of course, COVID, uh, your, your digital transformation strategies, uh, how the print business is going, um, sustainability and ESG. Uh, any last things that you want to share with, uh, with the audience today? Or? Yeah, well, we haven't talked so much about the security portion, but oh, I just said, yeah, I, I said in the, I said in the, um, in the beginning, uh, when, when the clients were just instantly looking for something, uh, something PC for, for their, for their workforce. And um, of course, um, I think it was even an aftermath of all the, the pandemic that the ransomware attacks got more um, cyber thieves uh, also becoming an everyday um, activity. So, and also here, Kony Kaminot is shaping a lot at the moment uh, to, to, uh, to help our clients from an endpoint security. So doing endpoint security. Um, I, I didn't want to forget that, that this is a major stream also within our hmm. um, IT services um, portfolio so that we help clients um, to, to give, um, again, cyber network and endpoint security. And endpoint security starts already with, uh, with an MFP. Yeah? So, uh, vulnerability can start um, already uh, on, an, on a multifunctional device. So that's why from that viewpoint, um, we're also doing at the moment a lot of um, client facing activities in regards of- uh, and, and that's part of your digital transformation strategy, not only security for, of course, the, the printers and copiers, but also for helping you know, your customers um, you know, secure their environment, secure their communications and things like that uh, as well, and their data, of course. Right, right, right. Yeah. So if, if we even go the other way around, if we think about the large corporation, they have been um, since since very long time, that is already something that has been seen as uh, one of the uh, one of the major uh, topics uh, to be addressed. But ex exactly going to small and, and micro clients, um, they have been the most who have been affected now during uh, the COVID sure. time. So that's why um, for them, the, the, the offer and, and to do something meaningful, small, agile is, is probably the best thing we can do at the moment. And that's why, it, for, for back to your question about the transformation, that is transforming already a lot of their businesses in terms of digitizing and, and protecting uh, information um, and assets, maybe the, 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 the intellectual property of, of clients they, they might have. You know, it's a kind of a crazy world that we're living with uh, the pandemic, um, with, uh, you know, sustainability challenges, fires and earthquakes and security now is also, you know, all, always uh, ongoing, you know, challenges that companies are having. Uh, it seems like Konica Minolta definitely is helping customers with all these, these uh, areas. And uh, um, it's been great talking to you about them. So thank you very much, Olaf, for, for joining us today. Um, I want to thank everyone for also listening in to the conversation, and it's been a pleasure um, having Olaf here to, uh, to talk about what's been happening with, uh, with Konica Minolta. Um, I want to thank everyone again, and uh, we hope that everyone had a good, uh, conver good listening in to the conversation, and I uh, hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks, Randy. Bye-bye. Thanks, Olaf. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.